I recently received a request from a viewer asking for a shark tutorial. So today I have a picture in front of me from Pixabay of a shark and a little bit of coral underneath it. We're gonna be painting it on an aqua board. So this is an ampersand aqua board. It's just a panel that has been coated and treated with a surface that's compatible with watercolor. And so what I'll do is the sketch first and then we'll need to wet it first to open up the surface and prepare it for painting. Um, but it's really, really easy to use. And the lovely thing about an aqua board, of course, is that it's hard, it doesn't warp or buckle in any way. It's also very easy to lift paint back out, which is awesome, really fun surface. So, okay, let's get started with the sketch. I'm going to tilt my board upright a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing better. And the picture I have, the shark is turning, so we don't see his tail, but we do see the top fin, and it's kind of off to the side of our composition right about here. So we'll just start with that. And then the shape of his body curves down, his head comes down this way. We're going to bring the nose right about here, dips in slightly, very subtle, comes back up a little and then forms the point. And the bottom of the body is hovering right above the coral. And his mouth comes right about there. And frown, frowns a little bit. You see this classic frown shape on the shark's mouth. And then the curve of the body as it's turning away where the tail is lost to us. And we see this fin on the underside pointing outward like that. And I think I made that a little too low, so I'm going to raise it a little bit. I want to compare how high that is to the bottom of the belly, and I definitely made it too low. So I'm raising it up quite a bit to right about there. And then dipping the belly down. And then this fin overlaps right above that one. Look for the space, the shape here when you're doing your sketch. I'm not looking at the shape of the fin necessarily, but I'm comparing the bottom of the fin to the bottom of the belly and how far apart those are. And then I can make a better judgment of where the top of the fin goes and how, how wide it is compared to the overall shape of the shark. And it's not gonna be perfect. This is just a freehand sketch done very quickly. And I'm not doing much erasing, so we're just going to go with it. The shoulder, or the point where the fin meets the body, is directly underneath the dorsal fin. And then you've got the gills right here. Super important part to include to make it look real. And there's a shadow shape that comes up and kind of connects with the gills creating this almost stair shape in the shadow. It's really interesting. And then the cutoff point where the shadow meets the light is almost directly in the middle of the head, right about there. Curves down over the nose and then intersects the middle of the nose right there. Then you have light and then shadow right here. The eye, let's look at the location of the eye. I would say it's about halfway between the tip of the nose and the gills. Right about there, yeah. Halfway is a good mark. There's a highlight over, over the top of it. Most of the eye is in shadow. And you can make any adjustments. I'm gonna actually really adjust the top of the body, make it a stronger line for better reference for me. better, stronger curve right there. And then I need to adjust the mouth. Comes in a little closer to the eye. Curves down. Yeah, you know, my initial mark wasn't bad. It's not perfect. I don't have all the angles quite right, but it's close. So we're gonna go with it. There's a dark shape right underneath the eye that comes right along it like that. And then you've got the nostril right here. And then I'm gonna draw a couple bumps down here to suggest the coral. We're gonna to want to paint light and shadow on those shapes and maybe some suggestions of fish. We'll have to see. Most of the background is gonna be really loosely painted just suggestions really of the coral, like that. 
Okay. So I think that's it for the sketch. We're ready to start painting. Make sure you have paper towel or a rag on hand for blotting and controlling how much water is in your brush. And you'll want some water jars with clean water and your watercolor paints. So I'm gonna start with water and just open up the whole surface, just loosely painting that on. You could also use a spray bottle to speed this up and just cover the entire aqua board. This is an unnecessary step. You can skip this if you're just painting on paper. All right, so I'm actually gonna let that dry before I begin. Okay, our aqua board has dried enough that we can begin painting. Um, the shark, by the way, this one is a black tip reef shark. And we can tell that from the image because of the black tip on the fins, on the dorsal fin and on this fin. Um, so real easy to identify. My image doesn't have a ton of color in it. So as artists, we have this unique opportunity to play up the color and to make this artwork whatever we want. And so let's just have fun with that. It's up to you what kind of colors you want to choose for the background. In my reference photo, the background is just kind of this dark blue, which is, you know, not that exciting. So let's have fun with that and let's make it really fun. We're going to just re-wet the background all around the shark for now. I mean, you can work in sections if you struggle, if you have a dry climate or live in a dry climate like I do, and you struggle with your surface just drying really fast, then you can just work in sections. So for now, we can just take the top section here, right about up to there, and let's have fun dropping colors in. I'm gonna start with ultramarine, and you can see how fun it is. It just sort of explodes on the paper. And I'm gonna take some alizarin crimson, mix that in and of course when you combine alizarin crimson and ultramarine you get this rich royal purple i'm going to take some indigo and darken the corner to create a vignette effect i'm going to bring that right up to the fin you'll slow down a little bit when you're painting right next to the outline of the shark itself but try to scrub the paint around so that it doesn't look like you've just painted around the outline you want it to look informal, painted loosely and quickly. And you want the background to just look like this whole world under the water. That's the goal here. That pop of bright blue I just added was phthalo blue. Now I want it to look like there's some coral here as well. So what I'm gonna do is take some burnt sienna and mix it in with the color that's already in my brush and it's gonna produce this more neutral grayish tone. And with that, I'm gonna drop that in over here and actually leave some of the white of the aqua board showing on the top so that it looks like coral just catching the light from above. And we're just painting around our pencil marks. A little more carefully around the outline of the shark, of course. Alternate between blue and red and purple, whatever colors you want to create your underwater world. And if you don't like the shapes that you made, you can always mess with them and go over them and scrub them out again. The wonderful thing about Aquaboard is it really is adjustable. So here I'm adjusting the edge of my shape of the nose of the shark. Wasn't quite happy with that. So I'm bringing these dark blues all the way up to where I want my coral to go. But I like how that looks. It's much more exciting than the reference photo. <laughs> so now let's go to the left side of the image. And we're gonna do this the same way. You can actually do wet and wet without clean water. I'm gonna start with murky water, dirty water. And I'm gonna paint right up to this fin it's really important that you preserve the highlight along that fin, so be careful along that edge. And along the edge of the dorsal fin. Now taking a second brush, this is totally optional, but I want the body to look like it's sort of fading as it turns. So I'm wetting inside of the shark's body and encouraging some of that paint to bleed a little bit into the white body of the shark in an effort to soften that edge. 
Whenever you soften an edge, it helps it fade a bit, helps it look like it's turning in space or receding. So I don't know how successful that was, but we'll see. All right, now I'm gonna take my indigo and boost the dark corner and then my phthalo blue. And then I want some alizarin crimson just to balance out that purple color that we put in the other side and ultramarine blue. So tons of beautiful sea colors right here. And if your surface is wet, it should just explode and blossom. And we'll just work our way all the way around the shark. Now towards the bottom, you might want to include some more coral. So just leave some of the white of the surface showing. So right here, my water and my brush are dirty. I'm carefully painting under the fin. I want to leave the highlights on those fins showing the sun or the light coming from above. So it's really important to slow down where you want to preserve those details. So where I'm painting the slowest is all around my pencil marks. I'm going to go ahead and just outline the whole shark to preserve my drawing. Then quickly take some water and scrub along that so that I don't have a weird hard edge where I just laid down those brush strokes. And then here at the bottom, that's where I want it to look like there's coral. So I'm not gonna cover the whole bottom with paint. I'm gonna leave some of that completely white. I'm gonna produce a shadow shape over in this corner and the suggestion of a rock's edge right there. I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and make it more purple and a little of my phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is really powerful. It's this cool blue and it's incredibly strong and vibrant. So if you want to be more sparing with that, of course, that's up to you. I'm kind of using it wildly in this painting and having a lot of fun with that. And I'm mixing in some more alizarin crimson here using blotty brush strokes, not being too specific, just suggesting the bumpy shape of the coral reef of the water and the surface of the living things at the bottom of the ocean. What would that feel like? What would, what would the shapes be? Try to move your brush in the way you can imagine it feels. Taking a little bit of brown, now that we're working on the coral, I want it to look a little bit more organic down here, a little bit more like the bottom of the ocean. And I'm actually going to take some of my green tones here. I have a leaf green, and there's still too much brown in my brush, so I'm going to rinse that out, take that leaf green again, and actually maybe a little bit of hooker's green. That's this jungle green. And start to paint that along the bottom, suggesting coral. I'm really not, hardly following my reference photo, very loosely at best. And then I do want to produce some more shadows. So I'm using indigo, just dropping generous amounts in with lots of water, darkening up the whole corner right here. And here I am following more specifically the shadow shapes that I see in the reference photo with the coral because I think they're quite interesting. Try to connect those dark shapes wherever you can. So for example, I connected this to that. And then I'm going to create a connection from this shape to a shape right here which is also kind of producing this separation in the coral. We're starting to get a sense of the shapes, the ground, the texture. I'm going to rinse most of that out.
And then if any of your shapes you feel like maybe got too specific, you can always push and pull them, especially on an aqua board. Just play with them, cover them up if you feel like it's too blotty. For example, here at the top, I'm gonna to kind of soften that out, scrape that out sideways so that it feels more like flat water across the top. It's so fun working on an aqua board because it can just do all these crazy cool things that you really can't do with paper. And already, if you look at this from far away, that really looks like water and it really looks like the ocean floor. So fun. Okay, so now we can move on to the shark. For the shark himself, I'm gonna use mostly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. When you combine these two colors, you get a really nice gray. So you can see that's really quite a perfect shark gray right there. And I'm gonna take my cleanish brush and pre-wet this area. Now I want the top of the shark to stay really light in value, but I do want a nice soft blending from the dark gray to the light. So that's why I'm pre-wetting it to encourage that blending. Then with my loaded brush that has gray in it, I'm gonna go in and drop in this mid-tone gray right over the top of the eye, except for that highlight. Paint around that. We're focusing right now on values, trying to get medium values right now, painting around the lightest values. And you can outline those gills right away if you want to. So there's a mid-tone right here along the side of the shark. I'm going to rinse that and remove the excess paint and water. So now I have an even lighter value in my brush and then I'm softening that gray up towards the light so that it's a smooth, almost seamless transition from dark to light. And then you see these almost curve shapes along the side of belly of the shark Make sure they're not too dark. You don't want those shapes overpowering it. Taking some more of that gray, bringing it to the underside. And then adding a little water and painting the top of his head, removing some excess. The top of his head is a little darker than this area. So adjust your values just by adding water. That's all you have to do. There's a dark shape inside of his dorsal fin. So we're gonna paint that in right there. And then the black tip, you can use indigo or whatever dark color you have to paint the black tip of his dorsal fin. I'm gonna need a darker color, so I'm using indigo for these really specific dark shapes on the fins. Really just tracing my pencil line right there. And be sure to leave that highlight where we see the light catching on the tip. And his belly gets really dark right above this fin. And pretty much blends in with the underside of this fin just above it creating one merged shadow shape. I'm gonna rinse that out and remove some of the paint, not all of it, but I still have a dark wash on my brush. And then I'm gonna pull that color down and around, grabbing a little bit more dark paint right here, blending that in. Now I'm gonna take some turquoise blue. This is a Holbein color. It's a Mediterranean blue, it's very cool. And I'm gonna use this for the underside of his belly and the underside of his fins, which they're actually white in color, but of course what we're seeing with the light and all the colors that are bouncing off the surface of the ocean floor, it's not gonna be true white, but it does need to be light value compared to the background. And you can take that turquoise blue and apply it in other areas of the shark. Here where his body is turning and you see this kind of shadow shape on the side of his body right there. 
can apply it there. Be sure to soften. And then I'm gonna take some ultramarine, which is a warmer blue. It has more purple in it. And that's a little too bright. I'm gonna rake that across the top of his fin, pulling it down and over, kind of under this shoulder or where the fin meets the body. Grabbing some more dark paint. I'm gonna get indigo for this and painting just above that highlight. This little dark shadow I see in the reference. Painting pretty detailed here, but I want it to look real. I want it to look like a convincing, beautiful shark underwater. And so with that dark paint, really pumping up the value right here. If you happen to lose any highlights, remember that with aqua boards, it's really easy to remove and lift back the paint. take that ultramarine again, boost that on its nose. There's a highlight there I'm going to need to restore. I'll show you guys in a minute. For now though, it's really looking fun. He's looking like he's swimming under the water and just having a good time. I'm going to take a little bit of my Hansa yellow light and paint that along the underside of his belly kind of reflecting the green that we're seeing in the coral here. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to take my Lebenzin Small Stiff White Synthetic Brush, and I'm going to take Pure Indigo. This will serve as my black. You can actually mix in a little bit of brown to make it less blue if you wish. And now I'm going to paint the eye. So make sure you can rest your hand on something. I'm going to start with the dark center of the eye, just a circular shape. There's a little rim right there. And then the most important thing here will be to preserve the outer rim of this eye that's in the light. Then this pretty much just merges with the shadow and you're gonna to wanna to produce this dark shadow shape right here that connects all the way across like that. So just follow along with what you're seeing in the photo. Match your values. Sometimes it's easy to get distracted or confused by colors. If that's the case, then you can take a photo of your reference photo with your smartphone or do this in a photo editing software and desaturate the photo, take out all the color. And that makes it so much easier to see what's light, what's dark, what's a mid-tone. I'm pushing and pulling my paint around quite a bit, trying to get the values adjusted and just right. Going darker right here. It's been a while since I painted on the aqua board. It is so different from painting on paper. It just responds quite a bit differently, but you can do this on paper as well. It's just gonna act a little different. And then the mouth. Now I accidentally drew that over the top of this area that's supposed to be in the light. So I'm gonna lift that out with my flat brush. Works really well for that. So now is your chance if you need to lift and adjust any edges. Look at how nicely that works. Oof. Love it. Stiff brushes work the best for lifting. For adjusting your edges. Okay, and then I think this highlight is too bright, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my turquoise blue, fill that in, more of a mid-tone. Shouldn't be as bright as his back. And then the nostril, the last little detail on the face here. And then I need to lift some light back out right there. That's better. Okay, so now is your chance to evaluate your painting. See if there's anywhere you need to go darker. I'm going to darken over the top of the gills right here. And just adjust my overall value on the belly. I'm gonna take some of that turquoise blue and paint it underneath the fin. And underneath this one, go a bit darker. And 
really trying to create a softness, blended effect. I'm going to go darker with that tip of the fin right there. And this shadow right here goes darker. It's looking so cool. All right, so as I mentioned before, the tip of the nose or the front of his head here has a highlight that I kind of lost. So once again, I'm going to use my flat brush and just gently scrub right where I want to restore that light and voila, we have light again. Aqua boards can take so much scrubbing, so don't be afraid to scrub your color back out. push and pull your paint as much as you want. But yeah, I think that looks good. So there is our finished shark just in time for Shark Week. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if there's any other subjects you'd like to see on my YouTube channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.